So I feel like I have a pretty good feel for what the feeling is in Rip City. I read a lot of Twitter. So I'd say I have my finger on the pulse of the community. I also have a lot of the same emotional swings that all you guys do. It's part of being a true Blazer fan. Eric does too. Me and him will text a lot during games and this is hard on him too. This is hard on everybody with the team struggling the way it is. But I think Rip City needs a pep talk. So far this season we have a 13 and 10 record. It doesn't look good when you compare it to our 10 and 3 or 12 and 5 start, but we also have the third hardest schedule of the entire NBA. The only two teams with a harder schedule than us are non-playoff teams in the Phoenix Suns and Sacramento Kings. I know the team is struggling lately and not playing well, and that being in the context of how the team normally plays, so that has a lot of people down, but this start happens every year. Last year at this time, we were in the same position, but we were losing to teams like the Brooklyn Nets. I believe we also lost to the Sacramento Kings early in the season. We were losing to bad teams. At this point, we had around the same record with an insanely easy schedule, and we still managed to end up getting the three seed. That's just to provide some big picture context, because I know it's really easy to get wrapped up in losing a lot of games during a five or six game stretch. But we're in a better position at this point than we were last year for sure just because of the tough games we've gotten out of the way. From the East, we've already played Milwaukee twice. We've played Boston. We've played Indiana. From our own conference, we've already played Denver. We've played Golden State. We've played the Pelicans. We've played the Lakers three times. We've played the Clippers twice, and they're on top, I believe. We've had to play the Spurs twice, and I know they're not that good this year, but that's still a solid team with two All-Stars. Even our easy games, we've played the Magic twice, but they're around a 500 team. The only really easy game that we've played so far is at the New York Knicks. We haven't played the Bulls, we haven't played the Hawks, we haven't played the Suns, we haven't played the Kings, we haven't played any of those really bad teams. Our schedule is tough throughout December. December is very, very hard, but if we can come out of this month above 500, then I think we have the inside track to getting home court advantage because our schedule from January on, we play a lot of those really bad teams. I believe we have one of the three or four hardest schedules from October through December, and then probably the easiest in the NBA from January through the rest of the season. So it's tough at the start of the season. We always start out slow so if we're able to at least tread water that's actually a good sign for our team of course it'll all come down to how we play in playoffs and that's going to take some coaching changes that i'm still hoping happen even though they probably won't but you never know if olshay might make a trade at the trade deadline i'm not expecting anything because he hasn't done anything in the past few years but he said last year he wasn't aggressive enough so maybe he learns from that maybe he decides to go after somebody like an auto porter at the trade deadline and things will always seem worse in a vacuum. But just remember, we can easily flip it around. We can easily play like we did to start the season. I don't think we were playing well because of cohesion or anything. I just think we were locked in and playing with energy and moving the ball a little bit more than we are now. We get back to what we were doing during that first 13 game stretch and we'll be absolutely fine. Going into the season, I was thinking we were going to win 47, maybe 48 games, really close to last season, but I didn't expect us to be over 500 going into January. So hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better. Just remember the big picture and just remember that we're playing a ton of really good teams. And just remember, this team has done this the past few years and has always overcome it. I don't doubt that we're going to make the playoffs, so just try and enjoy it until we get there. Hopefully on this road... We learned some things that can help us win a first round playoff series. As last year showed, it doesn't matter if you're the three seed or the six seed. So the only thing that I'm going to talk about from that San Antonio Spurs game is just our lack of defensive energy and defensive focus. This has been something I've been getting on the Blazers for the past few games. Hopefully we can break this trend of just not being energetic defensively. I'm tired of giving up 30 point quarters. I'm tired of giving up 65 in the first half. And this lack of focus and energy on that end has caused us to drop a couple of games. If we maintain that level of defensive energy and focus as we did from the first 13 game stretch, I believe we'd be 15 and eight, maybe even 16 and seven right now. I don't think it's the team not being good enough or anything like that. I just think we're not locked in right now for whatever reason. So whatever we need to do to be able to change that, we need to do it. Having Maurice Harkless back will help. He had a good stretch during the San Antonio Spurs game, hit a couple of threes, had a really nice floater, had a dunk that they called an offensive foul on. That was an absolutely ludicrous call. 
and he was engaged in getting deflections defensively. If Maurice Harkless is engaged, I feel like it lifts the spirits and the energy of the entire defense. So hopefully, him getting back into a rhythm can help fix our problems on that end. And now that I think about it, I do have a second takeaway from that San Antonio Spurs game. When did Alfaru Aminu learn to make double clutch layups, reverse layups, all these Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum type of layups? Because the past two games, he's been finishing everything and he's been finishing in a crafty way that I've never seen from him before. His handle looks a lot tighter. His movements are more efficient. He's not getting sunken into the floor like he has in years past and getting stuck and not being able to accelerate out of his moves. He's actually showing a little bit of burst off the dribble this dude has really improved his dribble drive game it honestly might be the most improved skill of any player on the team so tonight we got the dallas mavericks on tap luka Doncic might not play he has a hip injury that's dallas's star rookie from europe who's probably going to win rookie of the year without him dallas is worse but this isn't a bad team i know a lot of people probably view it as oh Dallas, this is one of those bad teams that we haven't played that you're talking about. But they're 11 and 10. They've won games. They're over 500. This is not an easy team to beat. And once again, if we let them get a good feeling in the first half and let them get up, let them score some buckets, then it's going to be very hard to win this game. But if we can get locked in and focused offensively, build a lead during that first half, don't let them get any momentum, don't let them get feeling good at all then I think we win this game pretty comfortably. That's the key, just like it's been the past few games. So anyway, that's all I got for this game recap. I hope that pep top maybe cheered you up. That was the best I can do. I'm not a motivational speaker or anything, but you know, hopefully it got you feeling a little bit better. So that's all I got for now. This has been Tori. Peace out, True Blazer fans. Go Blazers.